I cried, but it was so different. I wasn't toting this weight on me because it was the little girl inside of me forgiving him so that the woman in me could move on. Hey there, welcome back to This Is My Story, the podcast and YouTube show. Today, we are looking at part two of Sharon Parker's story. If you missed part one, you must stop right here. Click this little card above my head here and go back and watch part one of Sharon's story. There's so much within there that you have missed and you don't want to jump into part two without clicking that. So save this episode, click on part one and uh, then join in on part two. But if you've already listened to part one of the episode, welcome back to Sharon Parker's story. This is going to be an amazing part of the episode where we're going to hear deeper, further explanations of all that Jesus has done in Sharon's life. And if you heard part one of her story, then you understand she came from a place of complete despair, hopelessness and worthlessness, many, many multiple times of committing, um, trying to commit suicide, uh, the oppression of her childhood past from rape and molestation and a, a lifestyle of uh, medicating through drugs and alcohol, um, but she has found Christ. She's found this full redemption in who she is. She's no longer that person. That's an old version. That's an old Sharon. And there is a new person. There is a new woman of God that is vibrant, that is bold, that is free, that is healed. And I want you to hear how a lot of that came to be. So enjoy this episode. And I want to thank our two sponsors, Word of Life, Bible Camps, and the Bible Institute. And uh, there'll be a link down below. You check them out and there'll be some free Bible courses from some amazing professors in Bible and Christian Healthcare Ministries, alternative healthcare solution that is low cost sharing. And uh, I hope you'll check that out. Maybe you or your family may need to get some alternative healthcare. All right. Without any further ado, enjoy this second half of Sharon Parker's story. One night when I was in the jobs partnership program, the life work training program, um, one, they, one of the pastors was teaching that night on forgiveness. Yeah. And I'm sitting at the table with my coach and my peers and I'm crying like a baby. I'm crying an ugly cry. I got <laughs> snot running out my nose, my makeup running. I'm like, he messing up my cuteness and I don't know why. <laughs> and I'm just, I do not understand why his teaching on forgiveness is, is affecting me. So after class, my coach um, connected me and the pastor that night to talk. And he told me that night, I shared with him, you know, some of my, my story. And he said, he took a $5 bill and balled it up, stepped on it and picked it up. And he asked me, he said, um, would you still spend this? You want, would you still want this? I said, yeah, that's $5. I can yeah. spend that. Yeah. And he was like, it has value. That's why you want it. And that's just how Christ sees you. You've been trampled. You've been crumbled. You've been stepped on. But you still have value. And Christ loves you. Christ sees value in you. He said, and you are so broken and hurt. This, it, it hit you so hard because you have to forgive the people that hurt you. And I was thinking to myself, because I hadn't seen um, my marriage my uncle by marriage since I was a little girl and my plans were like, if I ever get to see him, I'm going to break him in too. I'm, I'm going to do some stuff to him that ain't pretty. And he, when he told me I had to forgive him and other people, mm -hmm. I was saying, I don't know. Pastor might not be wrapped too tight. Cause <laughs> I, I know I don't have forgiveness for them. Yeah. You know, you I was talking a little about girl when you were a little girl, when I was when a little girl, molested. when I was, when I was violated and molested. Yeah. Um, you almost feel like that guy, that pastor is asking too much of me. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm You're like, like, God can take care of him and God's taking care of me, but mm -hmm. don't ask me to do don't that. Don't ask me to do that. Yeah. Don't but ask you're, me. You're going to say this is a valuable step, big step, but very valuable for your freedom. It was, if I had not listened to, to that pastor and forgiven I would not be sitting here today because this is how I know that God wanted me to forgive so this the first man that violated me is was my uncle by marriage my half sisters half sisters uncle and um I was able to get his phone number and call him 
And I told him who I was and he remembered. He was, hey, how you doing? And then I told him, I forgive you for what you did to me when I was a little girl. Mm. And he said, well, what did I do? And I remember my, what God is pulling layers off because it was just a few weeks before I would have cussed him from A to Z. Like, you mm -hmm. know what you did, bro. Yeah. But yeah. I couldn't say one harsh word to him. I couldn't say anything, but I forgive you. And if I've ever done anything to cause you harm, please forgive me. And he went to telling me about his son and that's on death row. And I was in, God was using me to encourage him to seek a relationship with his son. And when I got off the phone, I cried so another ugly cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were by yourself on that one at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody saw that one. And but it was so different. When I finished that cry, I was different. Things changed because it was like I wasn't toting this weight on me mm. that didn't belong to me anyway. It was the his and it was the other men. And it was the other people, the other adults in that little girl's life, because it was the little girl inside of me forgiving him so that the woman in me could move on. Mm. And so my mother's second husband, he had asked me for forgiveness before he died. Wow, that's cool. And I forgave him, but I still never dealt with my mom. And um, that night, things just started to change when I forgave him I just felt really literally I felt light I felt like I had went to Jenny Craig in the spirit and <laughs> shed some stuff come on but, shaking it off <laughs> but he from that moment on my life has been a journey that I wouldn't trade I, for anything in the world I was starting to learn about the beauty of pain, the beauty that's in pain sometimes that we can't get to unless we really do have some, you know, you have some suffering, some pain, and you can't see the beauty of what Christ is doing because you don't want to endure any pain. Yeah. But um, let me go back to Jobs Partnership because in all of my story, I got this hatred in me for white people. Yeah, which, you know, We'll pause for a second because Jobs Partnership is is really, really? kind of what you and I bonded on mm -hmm. and bonded over because after I heard you speak that night, um, you came because mm -hmm. the Life Work Leadership was partnering with Jobs Partnership for okay. our class, mm -hmm. uh, our class sort of, uh, what would you call that? Our class uh, service. Service. A service yeah. type Community thing. Community service, service type thing. Mm -hmm. And so, man, when I heard you speak that night about Jobs Partnership, my heart just leaped because I just have a passion for seeing people who are in pain and suffering mm -hmm. and don't have um, the opportunities to find work or find a job and their families are yeah. suffering. And I was, I was just so elated about jobs partnership because they take individuals right through a training for 12, 12, 12 weeks, weeks, 12, 12 weeks. weeks. And then you can be, you can volunteer right here in Orlando mm -hmm. as a coach. Yeah. And I, we got invited and I got to be a coach <laughs> and, and be at a table with four guys who I just loved. And I loved the whole process and it's rooted in Jesus. So you're not yes. only learning about, um, interviewing processes and, and, and growing in wisdom and understanding and, but you're growing in the gospel and exactly. hearing the gospel. And before you ever volunteered there and work there later and going I to work there now, was a participant. you were there yeah. because yes. you needed a job. And, mm -hmm. and I just love that now. And I tell you this before that I love that you work there now because I just love that God is using you and your story in a place of people coming in similar to you and don't have that hope. And you That's get to it. be there. So, yes, I know you You meet Mark <laughs> Stanikis, who is or was, was the, the director, president. president uh, um, and he is white. He's about, yes. the, he's about as white as they come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't I mean, know I feel like I'm not like white, white, you know, but he's, he's like, he's white, white. <laughs> but bless his heart, you know, he's some yeah, people he can't help is, it. He is so, um, so during while i'm joining my church you know this from from my daughter coming to get me in november of 2006 to january of 2007 i have joined the church but i still don't know like what am i going to do like mm -hmm. what am what am i going to well, do what now? does life look like outside of drugs and running and, and trying to kill yes, yourself yeah and how do i stay here like 
um, my family is starting to come. My family never abandoned me. They just said no, which was the best thing they could have done yeah. for me was to say no to me. And um, so one night, um, my pastor asked, um, tells me he thinks there's a program and he think I would be a good fit for it. And he gave me the application and I was like, I know how to get a job. It's keeping a job that yeah. I, can, I have issues <laughs> with. And I do the application. I get accepted. I go to the orientation. And, you know, orientation go, okay, the first night of class, this tall, gray hair, white boy standing on the stage talking about he the president. Of Jaws Partnership. <laughs> and my friend, she has gone on to be with the Lord. Her name, she was, um, her name was Angela. She was with me. We went through it together. And I was like, no, this is not going to work for me, boo-boo. I'm finna go because yeah. I don't do white boys. So I got to go <laughs> because I grew up, I was, I grew up in my own bubble. And, and when we, most of the time when people say racist, they automatically think of white people. There's racist black people. Asian mm -hmm. people, Hispanic yeah. people, it's just, it is. And I knew that I was, you know, I didn't trust white, I didn't trust men, period. And I really didn't trust white men. And I didn't trust white people because that's because of the way I was raised, what yeah. I heard, you know. Yeah. And so when I, I'm like, oh, no, no, this is not happening. We're not doing this. I need another program. I'm going to have to find a job on my <laughs> own. But my friend was like, no, no, you need to stay. And so during the And Mark, the is, Mark weeks, is kind of a very, very friendly. He's uh, friendly. He's not, he's not, he's not going to stop either. He's no. kind of like this close to you, friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, he's yes. like, tenacious. Here. He likes yeah, to touch. All in my face. He likes to touch too. Touching. Yeah, uh -huh. Hey, how you doing? What did this white boy yeah, want? Uh-uh. Uh -uh. He got one more time. What do he want? But my coaches at my table, I didn't know they were going back, you know, giving reports um, about how all of us were doing in the yeah, class mm -hmm. and everything. And one of them decided to share um, my story with Mark. And Mark just is behind the scenes working thing. God is using him on my behalf. And when they, when they come and tell me, oh, Mark did this and Mark, I'm like, what does he want? What does he, he want? He was helping you. He was helping me to. I wanted to go into healthcare, but I have a criminal background because um, you can't mm, stab people with knives and get, yeah. you know and there, not yeah. go to jail. I hear it doesn't yes. work out so yeah, well. Yeah, don't, don't work out so well. <laughs> yeah, you get free meals when you do that and pretty bracelets. Yeah, but you can't but, get a job at the but hospital. But you can't get a job at yeah. the hospital when you do that. <laughs> and so um, I'm like. I, they asked me, they were asking, we were doing these assessments to see what we would be good at, what career we should pursue. Here I am with a criminal background, a violent criminal background. And my assessment says I would be good in healthcare, nursing particularly. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. And so I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get to be a nurse. I can't even get on the clean. I had applied to, it used to be Florida Hospital, it's Advent Health. I had applied to this hospital for housekeeping and they wouldn't give me the time of day. Yeah. So when That's the tragedy of our system though. Mm -hmm. Once you once you do commit a crime, you you know, Jesus could make you new, meaning you're not the same person that applied for the job but the first go around, but now you are. You. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and and but I mean sometimes that's just kind of a little bit of the like the level of consequence. Like, hey, yeah, careful kids. Mm -hmm. You go out there and you think you're gonna get away oh, with something, and right. then later on in your life you're gonna get it's your gonna life come back straight. To bite you. It'll still be there. Mm -hmm. But God is bigger than the laws of the land as well. And exactly. He gives you an opportunity. Yes, and he gives you a Mark Stanigus. So <laughs> Mark is behind the scenes. Um, and I'm all the time saying, Lord. Help me not to quit this program because yeah. consistency, I'm consistent in destroying myself, but I'm not consistent in anything good. Yeah. So help me not to quit. And when we do, I think it was career day or whatever, and they was asking us what we wanted to do or what our assessment says. And um, one of my coaches was like, would you like to do phlebotomy? I'm like, what's phlebotomy? And they said, what is that? And they told me what it was. And I was like, okay. 
And I was like, but I'm not going to get accepted because of my background. Well, little did I know about Mark Stanikis in my behind the scenes being my number one cheerleader, my fighter. And I was like, what do this white boy want? What is he, why he fighting for me so hard? Because yeah. see, I'm used to men, if they doing something for you, they want something from you. I didn't have big brothers. I had uncles and cousins but they were not what they were supposed to be in my life. So through... Um, yeah, you have your guard up with him oh, a lot. Oh, yeah, and you're with just, him a lot. And you're just wanting to wait for him to make that mistake and mm -hmm. prove that he is who you really That's expect right. him to be. Yeah, he and then he be... continues to be something other than what you've expected yes. in a good way. And, yes. and the Lord is obviously using this to not only like, you know, he's already brought in you sort of some freedom in mm -hmm. your past, but there was an element of your own life that you that, didn't even know he wanted to deal with, which was your view my, of people. Yes. And my, I love it. My view of people and how he will take people who you can't see. That's why we should never give up on anybody. He mm -hmm. will take people who you be like, no, nah, I can't ask them for help. Or no, they don't mean me any good or whatever. He'll take that very person to show his love for you. And so with Mark, as I, um, I got into the phlebotomy program, I graduated. And I mean, I graduated well. I had a job before I even finished the program. But what stu stood out to me was at my graduation, Mark was the only one there. There were no family members. There was nobody but him. That's cool. And I was like, what? And I'm, but I'm still leery. Yeah. And so throughout the years, God has used him to just push me. And I used to be like, this boy getting, this white boy getting on my last yeah. nerve. Yeah. He yeah. don't even know me. Hey, like I'm that. glad he paid away for me and you. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dang, I would have had that. Like, has You'd a, have had a hard time. I, I would have pushed. But he, he just, I'm like, what does he want? But Mark, at every turn, he helped me um, and just believed in me. Mm. And for no other reason except he loved Christ, so he has to love me. And he just wanted me to succeed. He, he could see God moving, but I couldn't see God moving. And I, when I was trying to get into the phlebotomy program, I thought, oh, my gosh, when they see my background, I'm Pookie good. I call Mark Pookie because yep. that's his attitude. Um, Pookie good, but he not this good. But he called me one day. He said, Sharon, when I think of your life, you know what I think about? You know the scripture in Joel that says, and I will restore unto you the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm did eat my army that I sent. And he was like, that's what God is doing. And I told him how fearful I was of telling um, the lady who was interviewing me about my background. And he was like, he, he encouraged me to do it. And I did it. And I was supposed to be waiting for a few days to get a call back. I got a call back like the same day. And I got accepted. And I was like, this would not that's be cool. possible without Mark. So God used him not only to break down walls in me, to um, open me up to different relationships, but he used Mark to help me to have trust and faith in people. And so over the years, he has become like, that's my brother in Christ. That's my yeah. big brother there. I call him Cousin Pookie because <laughs> he has just been such a blessing to me and God used him to show me that um I got you. Yeah. I love you and um I'm showing you through the least from where you least expect it. I'm going to let love flow through that, through that vessel from where you least expect it to yeah. show you who I am. And so I think that's good. People, people listening in, no matter where you are, what stage of life mm -hmm. you're in, that seems to be God's MO. When he moves, he does things that are counter cultural and, and mm -hmm. counter um, what we expect. Like he just yeah. will do things. And sometimes he uses, you know, the small things in the world or those who are not expected, mm -hmm. those who are not wise to actually shame the wise. Yeah. And he is 
perfect in his ways. And so I think for me, I'm just thinking you make me want to be open to the Lord's work in my heart and in my Amen. life. Lord, what are you doing? And, and, and help me to see maybe you're doing things in my life. You want to mm-hmm. in ways I'm not actually looking for it. Mm-hmm. So help me to look better. Help me to look in the ways that I think you actually might want right. to mm-hmm. work and, and listen to your story and Mark. Um, because I also just, I love that Mark was used by God. And I think all of mm-hmm. us listening can, can really glean from Mark's um, sacrifice, his love for you. Oh my gosh, and we can yeah. be, we can be a Mark Stanicus to somebody, mm-hmm. um, which takes mean sacrifice. You know, he was there for you when he didn't mm-hmm. have to be at your graduation. Yes. It was a small thing, but God used it in a big way because you life. had had, you had had a generation, multiple generations of, of learning not to like white people Mm -hmm. and God would use that person to actually help you Mm -hmm. and you could no longer not like him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. And and now you're, you're, you're not that person at all. And, and you're in, in every facet of your life, God has restored. And now two questions. Yeah. And what God was the way I see with what God was doing with, with Mark was showing me the closer I draw to him, the closer he'll let me see, you don't get to pick and choose who you gonna love mm. and who you gonna let in. Who's Jesus made you now? Mm. And when you look in the mirror, and who, who do you see when you get ready in the morning and going about your day? Well, first let me say this: not only did he restore in my trust in people, um, but he restored my relationship with my children and my yeah. family. He allowed my children to, um come to me and tell me he strengthened me so that I could hear my children's pain and not defend myself but just listen to them and just own what I did to them so that they could heal and he could restore us and gave me 13 beautiful grandchildren wow praise the lord see he wanted me to be so open he gave me white grandchildren Puerto Rican grandchildren, <laughs> Cuban, Jamaican grandchildren. Yeah, people say God doesn't have a sense of humor, <laughs> he but does. he has a sense of humor. He, he does. So now Christ, my redeemer, my strong deliverer, my mighty warrior, my healer, my, oh my gosh. He, I can't see myself as the scum on the bottom of somebody's shoe now. Yeah. Because he loves me so much that when I see myself, sometimes I'm like amazed that, gosh, it's really, really me, Lord. This It's you in me because I couldn't have been this on my own. But now it's like I'm open. I want to know what God is doing, what he's trying to do in my life. I'm now, instead of numbing pain and hiding it and trying to run from it, um, now I don't like pain, but yeah. I am willing now to endure it because I know God has a purpose in it. And I know that he is going to, he's working something out in, in that pain that you're going through for that season. And now I see myself as not rejected and unlovable but i am loved Mm. and i am embraced by jesus christ and so because jesus loves me and he knows me better than anybody even my mom he know the numbers of hair in my afro so he knows me he loves me good bad and ugly so he has blessed me through his word and through showing me love through other people to love myself but not just to love me, but to love myself so his love can flow through me and I can love other people because now I see my, I'm the gift of encouragement. I'm not going to tear down. That's I'm why gonna, I call you like every month or so, you know, <laughs> I'm getting down. I was like, I need to call my sister. Here. I'm a bridge builder now. Yeah, and and so, but what I love about the Lord is he has shown me, you belong to me. And you have to love who I love. You have to love them that that don't even love you. And so you can't just look at skin color. You can't look at um, uh, economic status. Mm -hmm. You can't look at how they treat you. You got to look at how I love you in spite of you. And so now 
I know that it is my mission. It is my purpose in life. And when you know your purpose, oh, the devil can't touch you then when you know your purpose. Because you know who has given you the purpose. And you know your purpose is your reason for living. And while you're here, you got purpose. God is not finished with you yet. So no matter how hard the enemy try, he can't take you out. Number one, he the devil. He don't have. He is not the giver of life. No. Christ is. God is. He has to get permission to go to where he lives. Amen. And he can't yeah. even go in there without getting permission. So how he gonna try to tell me how to live my yeah. life? He is a liar. Christ is my Lord, my Savior. His word is the lamp that guides me. And now I know my purpose to love with everything in me, and I am a helper of others yeah like my purpose is to help other people see the love of christ that no matter where you are christ can reach down and he can pull you up that's right and he is just like he when you get that it doesn't matter who rejects you or whatever because you're not trying to people please anymore you're not trying to prove you're good enough or you're not trying to prove you know, anything is just you want to please God. Yeah. And when you get to the place to where you just get transparent with him, like, Lord, I messed up big time. I, you, do you, I know you saw that. I really messed up, but I need you to help me so I don't come back to this place. Mm. I need you to help me, Lord, to see this person because they work in my last nerve. Mm-hmm. So can you help <laughs> me to see them the way you see them and yeah. let me show the grace and mercy that you show me. So I want to spend the rest of my life, especially helping women. Yeah. I, I would love to just sit down and have a conversation with a woman I don't know. I know, right? Who feel hurt, who feel like she nothing, who feel like she been beat down so low to there is no way, who feel like she did some stuff so nasty that she can't share it. I'm like, hey, I'm here. Yeah. You can share it with me. Listen. And so in knowing that, like, I'm always waiting, Lord, what you got next? I just lost my husband, and um, I, I was like... Yeah, it was only a month ago or so, huh? Mm-hmm, yeah. a little over a month ago, and I'm like, whew, Lord, um, now you, you, you got to show up now, because yeah. you said that you wouldn't put more on me than I could handle, and... Look, if you don't strengthen me, I can't handle this. Yeah. Because my husband um was my the first I w- I was married three times, but he was my first real husband. He was my husband in Christ. He was my best friend. He was my confidant. Yeah. He showed me what it means to love your wife as Christ loved the church. He loved my children, my grandchildren. He was like my ride or die. Yeah. But God had to, God showed me that um, I used him as a vessel to bless you, to help you. But now I'm moving the middle man so you can come directly to me because your husband was never your source. I was. Mm, So, and before I grew up thinking I had to have a man to, in my life to complete me or to make me look good or feel good or whatever. And I was afraid to trust God. I couldn't be by myself because I was like, yeah. I'm already unlovable. So let me grab the first thing smoking that come my way. But now Christ has me in a place where I, I miss my husband so dearly. I love him so much. But I'm like, God, if you got, as long as you got me, I can do this. And I don't need to run or jump into anything. Yeah. I want to spend the rest of my days serving you, loving on my family, and and I'm good. You know, I'm not fearful that you're going to leave me. Fear and and depression have been my greatest um enemies. Mm-hmm. Just from childhood. But now, you know, when that when they try to attack and they like to they like to sucker punch, you yeah. know? And they, they like rear to their come ugly together. head occasionally. Yeah, just... they they like to tag team. But see, when they tag team now, I have something, I have a weapon that even their tag team, they yeah. can't stand it. You know? Yeah. It's like um 
Christ's word in me and believing it, the Holy Spirit telling me that I'm his own, the Holy Spirit telling me that he will not let the enemy overtake me. So I believe that and I trust that. But for me, forgiveness and being in God's word, those two things have changed my life, life tremendously. Like now I got friendships, really, really good friendships with people that I never, ever, ever, ever <laughs> <laughs> would have had a friendship with. And yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Like you are the age of my oldest son. But to me, it's like God is using you once again to push me to know that you, you know, you just do what God put in front of you. You just tell it the way God give it to you. And you just don't be afraid or don't feel pressure. Don't, you don't have to um, be what man or society says you have to be. Be who God has called you to be. Do what he has commanded us to do. And that's spread the gospel and that's by the lives that we live so when i look at you when i'm talking to you and when we having our conversations i'm thinking to myself oh god thank you because this he the same age as my baby so there is hope my baby gonna receive christ as his yeah. savior one day i'm gonna have this conversation with my baby one yeah. day Amen. about um christ and his goodness and his mercy and so the journey isn't over now that my husband is is um is with the Lord, my question to the Lord is, what's the next assignment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Show like I told you on is. the <clears throat> like I told you on the phone the other day, you know, sometimes you don't know quite yet, so you just wait well, mm -hmm. you know, waiting with the Lord and and remembering all of His good works in your life and in your yes. story because He's He's with you now and mm -hmm. and you know just like it took a long time for you to find freedom and find healing, you know. Mm -hmm it could take some time for you to find out what's next. But in the meantime, you already know that relationship is foremost and it is yes. your best thing spending time in his word. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I will, I will pray for your family because that, that story is still living, you know, mm -hmm. with your kids and grandkids and that you find your place there and your joy there and, and mm -hmm. your place of purpose with them. And then, um, you know, I know it can be hard. I you know talk with your, um, uh, youngest son, I believe. Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, just, is everybody's going through all kinds of different things mm -hmm. in life. And uh, I know that you are a light, but maybe they may still be on their journey to find mm -hmm. their full healing and their full understanding, uh, maybe forgiveness. But uh, I pray for them that they will, and they will, you know, be yeah. on their own journey with the Lord. But I've, I've grown so much, you know, by knowing you and love, love calling you my friend, my yes. sister. And I think a lot of people, you know, anyone listening can, Mm -hmm. understand and relate to having something between them and God. Yes. And no matter what it is, mm -hmm. when it's there, it's hard and it's difficult. Um, and for many, many reasons, we have walls between us and God. They don't necessarily have to be identical in, in the narrative and that what that story mm -hmm. is, but Satan will use anything, anything. and everything That's to right. keep us from knowing God. That's it. That's but if you're mission. listening and you're going through that, you know, God will do anything and go through everything yes, for you. He will. God will. All you, you, you know, sometimes when you don't even know what you need, God knows what you need. Yeah. And the thing is just to ask him for help. Just even if you saying like me, I don't know if he's going to do it, but I'm asking him because I, he will. He loves us so much that. He is just waiting on us to ask him to help us. And sometimes the help comes in ways that we don't expect, but he loves us. And there is nowhere that we have gone that he can't bring us back from. And I am a living witness that he will bring you back. He will take you from those dark places and he will sit you at tables you have never imagined. Just give him a try. That thing that is so hard for you to let go of, just give it to him. Mm -hmm. Give it to him. He is our burden bearer. He's told us, cast our cares upon him, for he careth for us. No matter what it is, it's not too hard for God. Amen. That's it.
And I think too, for Christians and people who have a relationship with God, this is a conversation that needs to shake us to our core because mm-hmm. people around us are going through things and in, in, are, in, are on a journey with God or towards God that is mm-hmm. hard and that's mm-hmm. complicated and has a lot of pain around it. And we got to pull our head out of the clouds and remember that first and foremost, our relationship with God is for other people. Yes. He's called us to be a light into the mm-hmm. world, to go and make disciples of all nations. That's and it. so to not just be consumed by our own story and what we have mm-hmm. going on. But, you know, there are, there's someone in our sphere of influence or our circle or someone at the grocery store that That's we can it. be a light and we need to be a light because God, he wants us to love people, care for people mm-hmm. and acknowledge that there's people who are hurting. That's and right. To to snap out of our little bubble, you know, That's and get out there and That's right. And mingle. we need to know too, as, as um, believers in Christ, you don't know who God is going to draw you to. So be open. You don't, you may think you and another person because of the color of your skin or whatever, that you have nothing in common, but that's not true. When you are a believer in Christ, you have so much in common. Yeah. That's so just be open to let God do what he needs to do in your life. Just say, Lord, I am an onion. You peel away the layers. Do what you're going to do. That's right. Hey, you want to come back on another episode sometime? Maybe. I know it's an hour drive for you, but (laughs) I mean, what do you think about the studio? It's it's not bad for a shed, huh? I'm thinking about maybe calling you. I thought about about maybe uh, putting a bed in here. You know, I could sleep in here when I get in trouble. (laughs) Hey, well, for everyone listening, though, and watching, uh, if you would love to see... Uh, Sharon come back on her and I to have another conversation we believe it or not we got a lot of we talk about a lot of good stuff yes, we do. all the time and, and that, we've been talking about your story years ago but we talk about anything and everything and now, yes. so if you'd love to have us have Sharon back on I know I would love to um, but drop something down in the comments down below uh, encourage Sharon and if you would love to reach out to her because she has a big heart and and would love to connect with anyone especially ladies that she mentioned so if you're going through something or you know someone that is struggling um, through something that is hard i pray that you will reach out put it in the comments um you have an email that you would want to drop down below it's parker sharon d as in daisy d as in nine at gmail.com awesome all right so i'll put that down below in the description and any any final words for our listeners just don't give up hope you know jesus is soon to come and if you just hold out hope until he comes it's gonna be all right until he comes it's still gonna be all right we're gonna go through some hard stuff but he promised he promised never to leave us nor forsake us he said he would be with us always even to the end of the world so just just hold to that hold to that and we we got this through our lord and savior jesus christ we got this amen that's right we got this in fact we're out of time so we got to go go. as i drop off on this episode just want to thank you so much for tuning in to this ministry and this podcast because it means a lot to me it means a lot to sharon that you're listening and um, take this thing a next step for us if you will hit a like button on there on the youtube uh, or drop a comment down below and help us with the youtube algorithm to get this conversation further out into the world And if you stumbled upon this conversation, welcome. We're glad that you did. Uh, Please connect with Sharon. Connect with me if you have any questions. And I just gave Sharon a copy of this. So this is the new curriculum, Scarred for Good. So discovering the goodness of God in your story. And it's a seven-week process. I'm giving one of these to Sharon. You excited to go through this? Yes. You might do something else. So... Yeah, I think it Sharon. Might be something else undiscovered that I don't know. That's right. Is. Yeah, you will. You, you got it though. You're ready for a battle. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, guys. Well, God bless you guys. Have a blessed day, and remember, you have a story, and it matters more than you know. Yeah.